Hey everybody, John here. Welcome to my series, How to Use GMS. And in this video, we're going to be diving into the oscillator section with all these knobs and controls here, and also the global settings over here on the right kind of middle-ish area. So first things first, we're going to start with the oscillator. So we have three of these, and they can go up 36 semitones up and down, so a span of three octaves in either direction. And you have some fine controls here for the fine uh, detuning by 50 cents up and 50 cents down. So for the waveforms, this first one we have here is a saw. And if we freeze that, we can see the saw here. And if we click this where it says saw or click this little arrow down here, really anywhere in this area here, you get this drop down of a lot of different type of waveforms that they have inside here as, uh, as preset waveforms. And then you can also load your own if you'd like to do that. So a couple of these I'd like to show you. So this is going to be beast. That's going to be crunch. It's going to be Devil's Horn. So there's 29 of those. I'm not going to go through every single one, but you get the general idea. There's a lot of cool ones in here. And what's also I kind of feel like is nice is that you do have just a regular sine wave, and you have a couple different types of saws. So you have like a saw, then you have a saw retro, and the saw mean, which is kind of cool to have different variations of those. So next up here, we're going to go into this mix area in this section here. So let's go back to our regular saw. And then for the second oscillator, I'm going to pick a sign to make it obvious and then pitch this up by two octaves, so 24 semitones up. Now when, when we play a note, we're just going to hear that first saw wave. Let's unfreeze that there. We're going to see this first saw wave. And as we increase this oscillator two mix knob here, we start to hear that high pitch sine wave. All the way to the right will just be the sine wave. All the way to the left will be saw one, and then anywhere in between is going to be the mixture of the two. Now this third one down here, let's choose another sign, but let's go up all the way, so up three octaves. And this, before we move on, this little invert here will invert the uh, the phase of oscillator two if you need to change that for whatever reason. Uh, next, so oscillator three, so let's have a mix going. So we hear the buzziness of that first saw, and then the high-pitched tone of this second sign here. Now when we increase oscillator three, we start to hear the third one there. And all the way to the right is just oscillator three. And then down here we have the noise so that you can sneak in a little bit of white noise. And then all the way to the right, just basically becomes a noise oscillator at that point. Then moving on over here, we have the phase of oscillator two that you can change the exact phase all the way around. Different than inverting, because this is kind of like a flip-flop of where it is, and this is actually controlling the phase of the entire cycle. So that's something to think about as well. And then next up, we have this retrig area. So up here is going to retrigger the phase, the same phase for every note that you play. And then this retrigger down here is going to retrigger the unison voices. And we're getting going to get into that in this next spot here. So let's turn some some voices on. Let's take these oscillators down. So we just have one saw wave right here. So here in this unison voices section, we have one through 16, which is quite a bit for, for a synth. 16 voices is quite a lot. So let's go with like four. So we can already hear these voices coming in. And we have... Uh, the stereo area here, and as we drag that up, you'll hear how they start to become separated. And that's what that uh, stereo knob here does. And then below that, we have the D2 knob. So here, they're going to be all in tune. And then next up here, we have the keyboard octave switch. So here's a quick uh, area to change all the voices in the synth to uh, up two octaves or down two octaves. All right. Next up over here, we have the sync, which is going to sync this first oscillator here. Let's turn off our voices so we can hear this better. Now we could also do a 2 to 1 FM. So for this here, let's pick a triangle wave. 
this is fine here at 24 and let's go with a sign for this one here and as we change this this second oscillator will start to frequency modulate this first one here or we can go here two to one to ring modulate Something pretty cool there as well. And then next, let's dive into this MIDI slash EQ button here. So this will change your panel. This is the only button that really changes this panel here. And up here, we have a couple of different parameters. To demonstrate this, let's go back to a saw. You'll see why in a second here. So we have a saw wave here. Now this first area right here is going to determine the, basically you have a value of velocity. So how hard you hit the notes, if it's quiet, or if it's louder. And you can see in the top left here the uh, the velocity numbers. So that's quiet, 28, 3, 1, or 16. Then harder, it's going to be 120, 114, or something like that. So with that value, you can drive different types of things. So let's say we drive the cutoff, and let's turn this amount up quite significantly so we can hear the uh, the difference. And then on our filter, let's drag this cutoff down. So hitting it low, or softly, it's not going to open up this filter very much. But if you hit it hard enough, it will. So soft, hard. And we can see that reflected here too in the spectrum view as well. So it shows how many more of the harmonics get through the harder we press the button. So let's disable that here. And then next up we have this modulation control here. So this is going to determine the mod wheel the mod wheel is basically going to be the source of whatever you want to drive. So any of these parameters you can alter and change by using the modulation wheel. So let's go to that cutoff again. Let's turn this up here a little bit. And sometimes what I've noticed, the modulation wheel sometimes will have no effect. And if that's the case, you click this down arrow here, go to browse parameters. And then over here on your uh, left hand side of your toolbar, you're going to want to look over for MIDI CC number one right here. You right click that, link to controller, and then move your modulation wheel. And then now, let's turn this amount up here. So as I turn that modulation wheel, it'll now affect the, the cutoff. So that's the way to use the modulation for that. And there's also the other sections there for uh, for aftertouch and for your pitch bend as well. You can set the range in different semitones as well. Aftertouch is basically a pressure applied to keys or pads after being played. Not every controller has one, but if you do, that's how you drive all these parameters right there with that. And then use the amount now for how strongly you'd like to affect that. Also something that's really cool here is you have a built-in EQ here. So let's click this little enable button here and it'll turn it on. And then you have five bands here. So specifically, the low one's gonna be 60 hertz. Let's turn this cut off a little higher up here. So you have 12 dB up and 12 dB down. Uh, so cut and boost at 60, her 60 hertz for this one. Semi is gonna be 220 hertz. So a lot of that mud, if you find your, your synth patch is getting kind of muddy or there's like a blanket sound over it. I kind of envision a packing blanket over a speaker. Uh, that's kind of how I envision that, like 200 to maybe 320 or maybe 400 sometimes, but yeah. So it's a good way to take this down a little bit if you want a little bit more clarity out of your synth. Cause that's a sound we're usually try to eliminate. And a little goes a long way. So don't cut all of it out cause then it's just gonna be completely thin. Just a little, maybe one or two, two deeps out and you'll be fine. And then middle here is gonna be 1,500 Hertz. So 1.5 K. The middle is going to be 8K, and then the high is going to be 12K. Let's bring this cutoff more. So hopefully you can hear that high boost right there. Now let's jump back in here to the synth parameters as well. 
So we cover this area here. Uh, let's see what else maybe we didn't cover. I think we are good. I don't know if we covered this unisono. So this is going to be the phase of your unison voices. I think that's the only one I didn't cover. Oh, also the mono voice too. So this mono voice, you have this selected and you're only going to be able to play one note at a time. So I'm hitting two keys at the same time, but it's only registering this uh, first note that I'm pressing here. So that's that there in a nutshell. Next over here, we have the bank and the program and the difference between these two, like if you click this window and then you click this window, you might think, okay, they're the same window, but essentially this is clicking the bank. So these folders here, so let's go over to leads and synths, for example. So that opens up this folder, and this is going to be the program within that folder that you're going to choose from. So you choose your bank of uh, your folder of sounds you want to listen to, and then you scroll through these presets here with uh, this program arrows right there. Next up, this level envelope. This is basically going to be the volume for the envelope control. And we're getting, we'll get into the envelope and the LFOs in the next video. And then down here, you get your standard attack. Let's go with our default again to demonstrate this easier. So this is just the fade in knob of your sound. All the way to the left starts instantly, and then all the way to the right is uh, the defined time that it takes for the volume to go to its full amplitude. And then next we have decay, and the best way or the easiest way to really hear decay is to go next over to your sustain knob turn this all the way down and then give just a little bump to it let's turn this tack down here so basically this sustain is saying that when you hold the note this is the loud this is the volume that it's going to be held at and this decay is going to be the time difference between when the attack hits the the loudest peak until it goes to sustain so if we have a short decay, it's going to jump from that attack really fast down to that sustain. But if we have a longer decay, it takes a lot more time for that, uh, for that signal to drop all the way down to that sustain level. And then release is going to be basically the fade out, which hopefully you know by now. Next over here on the right, you have your master output. So this is going to be the final output of your patch. If you find you're lacking in level, you can always boost it here, or if you have added a lot of crazy stuff going on and you're getting into the red, you might want to back it down just a little bit so it's at a healthy level right there. And then you can alt-click to set that back to default. And here's your global pan, so pan left and right. I'll click there, then you have a global pitch, up two octaves, and down two octaves. If you want to quickly change the patch so you don't have to change every little setting here, you can just drag and drop literally this uh, section there. Then you have a frequency slide or also known as portamento. So let's turn this button on here to engage it. And the higher value this is, is gonna be is there gonna be the greater bend. So that basically does it for this video. Thank you very much for watching. And in the next video, we're going to be diving into the filter envelope and LFO section. And then after that, we're going to be diving, in, diving into the effects section over here on the right. So hope to see you in the next video and thanks for watching.